All right, and this last uh, part of this uh, uh, notes we're going to be looking at, we're going to be looking at the anaerobic part of cell respiration. So we've covered just the background information, cell respiration, what it is, where it occurs. Remember, it's the mitochondria where uh, most of this stuff happens. We looked at glycolysis, which is the first part, breaks down glucose into um, pyruvate molecules. Remember, that happens in the cell, the cell cytoplasm. Then we're starting to look at either we go aerobic pathway or we go anaerobic. Remember, aerobic pathway, which is what we just looked at, uh, that's going to require oxygen. Um, that's where most of the ATP is going to be produced. Remember, the aerobic and anaerobic both are going to occur in the mitochondria within the cell. So let's start looking at the anaerobic uh, respiration process. We'll look at alcohol fermentation first and lactic acid. Um, when I, when uh, your oxygen is not available, this is when anaerobic is going to occur. Cells still need um, still need energy and usually when uh, fermentation is going to occur especially within say muscle cells uh, you're going to have to be burning something using something if there's not oxygen available you're going to be needing to use something to cause to to be able to produce this ATP okay so fermentation is a way of being able to make ATP if there's not oxygen available if there's if all the oxygen has been used up but ATP is still needed then fermentation will kick in um, through anaerobic respiration to make sure that ATP is still being made when there's no oxygen available. Unfortunately, fermentation is not as efficient because it's not using oxygen, uh, so it's going to be less. It's going to produce less ATP than aerobic respiration. There are two types of fermentation: lactic acid fermentation and alcohol fermentation. Each of these processes is only going to produce about two ATP molecules from each uh, pyruvate. Okay. Uh, alcohol fermentation. Let's look at it real quick. Uh, this is usually going to be uh, uh, this alcohol fermentation process is usually going to be used by bacteria and yeast. Um, Once the process is done, uh, the, the byproducts are going to be alcohol and carbon dioxide. And we use these processes. We use these processes to make wine, for example, from fruits. Uh, we use this process to make breads. Uh, for example, sourdough bread um, can do this. Regular old wheat bread and white bread, uh, you can do this as well. Okay. Uh, lactic acid fermentation is going to be used by bacteria, can be used by certain fungus, um, but what it's doing is it's taking lactate, or it's producing lactate as, as a byproduct through lactic acid fermentation. Uh, yogurts, cheeses, uh, or just some examples where bacteria or fungus can uh, can go through lactic acid fermentation and produce uh, foods can be produced as a result that we that we make foods can be produced as a result but lactate is that product that's going to be in the final part of lactic acid as far as humans go let's let's focus on us because this I mean yes there are foods that can be made whether it be wines or breads cheeses yogurts uh, through these processes but how how do we use anaerobic respiration. That's, that's what this is all about. So, in lactic acid fermentation, we do produce this through anaerobic respiration, and we produce it in our muscles. Our muscles need ATP all the time. If you think about it, what is the main function of muscles? It's for movement. Think about all the types of movement we do, whether it be you getting out of bed, walking, uh, moving your arms, uh, blinking your eyes, okay, your heart pumping, all right, ATP is constantly needed uh, by our muscles. Say, for example, we are running short on oxygen, maybe we're exercising or playing a sport or uh, you're in band or whatever it is that you're doing and say for whatever reason you start running short on oxygen supply because you've burned up all the oxygen available. 
Your muscles still need ATP, so they're going to kick in the anaerobic process of respiration, and they're going to start um, going through lactic acid fermentation to make sure they get the ATP they need. Okay, whether it be um, running, I mentioned this before, whether it be doing something simple as as uh, carrying your backpack from one side of the school to the other. Eventually you're going to use up the uh, stored amount of oxygen and then the amount of oxygen you're taking in is not going to be enough and you're going, your body's going to kick in the anaerobic process. So they're going to get into uh, using lactic acid fermentation. It doesn't produce as much, but it will produce some ATP for them. It also produces lactate. And this lactate will accumulate in muscles, okay? Um, and once you get enough of it built up, it's going to start causing burning sensations. You know, maybe in your leg muscles, you'll start feeling burning sensations. Or if you're carrying your backpack all the way across the school, you'll eventually start noticing a burning sensation, say, in your shoulders or arm muscles. If you're running, um, if you're carrying a... Your, uh, your band equipment, whatever it is that you're doing, uh, and you start noticing those burning sensations in your muscles, that's because lactate is building up because your body's using lactic acid fermentation instead of aerobic respiration to produce that energy you need. Soon after those burning sensations occur, that lactate uh, is going to be, or soon after this is built up, the, the, the bloodstream, remember the bloodstream is important for a lot of things and, and uh, it's one main thing it's important for not only to carry oxygen where it's needed but it also gets rid of waste it's going to carry that lactate to the liver where it can be converted back to pyruvate so it can be used again uh, through this whole process all right um, so just just let's wrap up lactic acid okay one more t or uh, let's rack up wrap up uh, um, anaerobic one more time when your body's lacking in oxygen for whatever reason it's used up the short amount of oxygen supply it has stored it is still going to need ATP maybe quick ATP whether it be um, like I mentioned exercising uh, carrying heavy uh, heavy objects that type of thing your body's going to need it so it's still going to go through respiration it's just going to go through anaerobic um, the lactic acid part of anaerobic is what our bodies will go through usually in our muscles um, it'll produce energy but not a much, not a lot only about 2 ATP compared to aerobic that can produce up to 38 ATP molecules it's going to produce some ATP but it's also going to produce lactate which will accumulate in your muscles it can make your muscles sore it can cause your muscles to start having a burning feeling in them but eventually your body will flush it out it'll be carried away by the bloodstream to the liver where the liver will process it and, and recycle it back into pyruvate so it can be used again. So as a quick blanket, one more time, cell respiration. Cell respiration is going to need some form of carbohydrate, all right, usually sugar, usually glucose. It is going to take that glucose in the glycolysis stage of cell respiration, and it's going to break that glucose down into two pyruvate molecules. This happens in the cell the cell's cytoplasm. Once that those two pyruvate molecules are formed, those those three carbon pyruvate molecules are formed, they'll be transferred into the uh, matrix of the inner matrix of the mitochondrion. And then if aerobic respiration is going to occur where there's a plenty of oxygen, <laughs> uh, the Krebs cycle is going to kick in and it's going to make those pyruvate, it's going to convert them into uh, energy, usually about two ATP molecules, plus it's going to make two electron carriers, NADH, FADH2, and then it's also going to produce a byproduct of carbon dioxide. Once the Krebs cycle is done, then you have those electron carriers that's going to carry uh, electrons to the inner membrane of, these, of the mitochondria where it's going to find a particular protein complex and pass these electrons through this protein complex, allowing these proteins uh, to harvest the energy from the electrons, eventually putting them through a protein uh, ATP synthase 
part of the electron transport chain where the bulk of the uh, ATP is going to be produced through aerobic respiration, usually about 34 ATP. Okay, and then the leftover protons uh, from this process are going to be uh, added to oxygen to form water as a byproduct. Uh, that's aerobic respiration. Produces a total of, of 38 ATP molecules at a time. The other side of that coin, if you don't have enough energy or enough uh, oxygen, then organisms are, can go through two processes, either alcoholic fermentation or lactic acid fermentation. Remember, this is anaerobic. Through uh, alcohol fermentation, bacteria and yeast are going to use this process and um, to get energy, and we also get foods from it. So we also get foods from the other one, the uh, lactic acid part, like cheeses and yogurts, that type of thing. But our bodies and other animals will go through uh, lactic acid fermentation when their bodies have used up um, the supply of oxygen they have available, and they're not able to take in enough oxygen to, to keep aerobic going. So when anaerobic respiration kicks in, it's usually if we're running or playing a sport or carrying heavy objects for a long period of time. We're going to burn up the energy or the oxygen that we have stored. Anaerobic will kick in. Lactic acid fermentation will start. It only produces about 2 ATP, so not very much, but it will produce energy for us. Um, byproducts will be lactate. Lactate will build up in muscles, causing soreness and burning sensations, but eventually it will be filter through the blood and the blood will carry it back to the liver where the liver can make it back into pyruvate so we can use it again for respiration.